Thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Alien Brush Pack for Corel Painter. Let's start with the first brush in the Alien Brush Pack, and that is called Alien Cave. I'm going to go ahead and paint into this piece of artwork here on a new layer. The color that I have selected is a darker color because this particular brush and many of these brushes are glow brushes, meaning that they're going to gradually build up to a lighter color. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So I'm going to choose a color that's much darker than the color that I'm going to get. I'll paint over here on the wall and you'll see I get these illuminated cracks. If I lift my pen up and paint again, there's a chance that the pattern might change direction. So I'll lift up and press down a few times here, and you'll see that the cracks don't always go the same direction. Now if you press firmly and hold in one spot, it's going to build up to white. If you press lightly, it's not going to build up quite as fast and you won't get as thick of lines. And as I mentioned earlier, you want to be choosing a darker color so that it doesn't build up to white too fast. If I choose a color that's much brighter, then you'll see that it builds up to white much more quickly and I don't quite get the color that I wanted. So typically a darker, more desaturated color is going to build up more gradually. We'll go ahead and clear that out and let's take a look at the flow maps because this particular brush can also utilize flow maps. So right now with this particular flow map, I'm getting a pattern like this but I could change the flow map to something like fine dots. And now we're getting a different pattern. If I change that to fish skin and I paint, then you can see I get a completely different pattern. I can build it up on itself like so to get different patterns. Now right now this layer of paint that I added is opaque. I can also change the composite method for these glow brushes to screen and that will help it blend with the background. And sometimes that gives you better effects if you're going for a light. Now I'm not limited to using a glow brush only for lights. I could also use this same brush to create cracks in the floor. I'm going to change the composite method to multiply. I'll choose kind of a dark blue like this. I'll change my flow map back to clouds. You can also play with the flow map scale and contrast as well. I'll go ahead and paint over here on the floor using light pressure and I can create these cracks on the floor. Since this is on a layer, I can reduce the opacity of that layer and I can alter it in lots of other ways. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is called Alien Code. I'm gonna choose a blue hue, and again, choose a darker color. I'm gonna change the composite method of this layer back to screen, and I'll just paint and wiggle in one spot, I'm not moving my pen much, but I am pressing down firmly and wiggling it back and forth so it builds up, and you get this alien text, these different symbols that look kind of electronic and not anything that a human would recognize. The next brush is called Alien Fog. I'm gonna choose a cyan color like this. Again, I'm using a screen layer because of how I want it to blend with the background. And I can paint in this Alien Fog like this. Again, you can change the flow map for this brush. I could change it to fine dots. And you can see I get a completely different pattern. Let's move on to the next brush and that is called Alien Moss. I used that for the mossy background here. I'm going to select a dark green color like this. I want to change my flow map to something else. Let's try something new. We'll try marbled. Now if I paint with this brush, I get this nice mossy pattern. I can put some over here on this side as well. I'm going to select a brighter green and make it a bit more yellow. If I use lighter pressure, I can build it up a little bit more slowly. If I use heavier pressure, it's going to build up quickly. So you probably don't want to press too hard here. You'll also want to make sure that the color you're choosing isn't too bright if you want it to build up more slowly. I'll add some highlights to this moss here. Moving on to the next brush, we have Alien Ore. Now it doesn't really matter too much which color you choose because you're gonna get a rainbow colored pattern no matter what color you choose. I could of course make the color cooler and it might be more dominant with a cool color. But for the most part, it's gonna have a lot of different colors in it. So this brush also uses the flow map. I can choose a different flow map, let's say clouds. I can use lighter pressure to build up these little speckles. If I want that pattern to be finer, I can reduce the scale of the flow map. I can get a finer texture, or if I want it to be bigger and broader, I can increase the scale. Now you might find that you get the opposite effect when you do that though. I'm actually getting a finer texture here with a bigger flow map. The way the flow map's working is it's keeping the paint concentrated within certain areas of the flow map, while in other areas it's blocking the paint out. But you can see the way that the particles behave within these patterns in the flow map it's different when the flow map shapes are larger versus when they're smaller. 
Or long story short, you can get a lot of looks out of the same brush if you're willing to play with some of these settings. Now you could leave this as a screen composite method or you could set it back to normal or default, depending on the kind of blend that you want to get. Normal looks a little more metallic to me. The other difference is that when you're using screen, it will blend with the layers underneath, so it may become transparent. If you prefer it to be opaque rather than transparent, make sure those brush strokes are set to a normal composite method. The next brush is called Alien Skin. You could use this as a skin texture for an alien. You also have a bit more control over the texture by selecting a paper. So I'm going to change the paper to simulated wood grain. I'll just choose kind of a lower mid setting for the scale and contrast of this paper. Make my color a bit brighter. And now when I paint, I'm getting some paper texture. If I wanted some more reptilian skin, I could choose a green and put in something like that and then choose a lighter, brighter green. And now I have some reptilian skin texture. You could enhance that effect even further by choosing a paper that has kind of a scale pattern, maybe like fine dots here. Choose an even brighter color. And now when I paint, I get kind of a scaled texture. The next brush is called Alien Vein. I'm going to choose kind of a red blood color like this. I want to go to the flow maps and I want to go ahead and just lower the scale of this cloud's flow map. I'll paint over here on the wall and you'll see I get this kind of biomechanical vein pattern. Again, you can use the normal composite method if you want it to be opaque, or if you want it to look more like light and be transparent, you can choose screen. If I take that layer and I move it over some of the objects in this painting, you can see it's not covering it up, it's just kind of blending with it. You can also play with different flow maps here. I could choose, for example, fish skin. I use light pressure and you can see I can get this vein pattern. Or I could change it to organic verticals, do some downward strokes and I get some really interesting patterns here as well. Let's move on to the next brush and that is called Alien Web. I'm gonna go ahead and just reset my flow map back to its default. And I'm gonna choose kind of a greenish gray color like this. Maybe up here on the ceiling we want there to be some sort of web hanging down. So I'm just gonna build it up like this. Might choose a lighter, brighter color. Add some highlights like so. Again, you can experiment with different flow maps to get different patterns. I'm going to try hot lava. I'm going to take the scale down a bit here. And you can see I get a slightly different pattern. Moving on to the next brush, we have beam up. I'm going to go ahead and set the composite method to screen. And I'm going to choose a dark red color like this. Now this brush can create a teleportation beam, but it also teleports to a different location while you're painting with it. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over on the left of the canvas. And I'm going to hold shift and just paint a stroke up and down. And you can see that that beam appears not next to the cursor, but quite far away. That's just the way this brush works. But don't worry because you can paint in your beam like this. And then you can select the layer adjuster and you can move it exactly where you want it. You can also free transform it and you can make it thinner or wider. You could also change the perspective of it if you wanted to look like it's beaming up from outer space. And you can change the paper texture if you want to get different patterns. The next brush is fur balls. That's how I created the fur for these little alien creatures here. I'm going to go ahead and set the composite method to default or normal. I'll go ahead and stick with this red color here. And I'm just going to tap and hold in one place and that builds up the little fur ball creature. If we want one to be a different color, we choose a different color and put them in. If you want a really big furball creature, you can make a bigger brush. If you want a smaller one, you can create a tiny brush. Now the creature you're going to get is going to be much bigger than your cursor. So if you want a really tiny one, just set your brush as small as you can. And if that's not small enough, you can always free transform it to make it smaller. And then of course you can add to this. I painted in an eyeball just using some of Corel Painter's default brushes. And then of course to make them look more three dimensional, I added some shading and color to them so they don't look so flat. And then to add these antennae, I did that with the next brush, which is called Gel Hairs. I'm going to select a greenish hue and make it dark. I'll create a new layer so that it's on top of my fur balls. And then I'm going to start above the creature here and pull down toward it like that. The reason why is because on the end of the brush, you have this little bulging area that's slightly more illuminated. And then of course, you can build it up if you want, and you can make something that's a bit thicker. I'm going to go ahead and just name these layers so that you know what I'm doing here. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could create a new layer, set it to screen, 
and then you could use just a regular airbrush to paint over the ends here to make them glow. So that's more or less how I made those furball creatures. Moving on to the next brush, this is called intestines. This could be the entrails of an alien creature. I'm gonna choose a color like this, and I can just pull out strokes. The strokes kind of go in their own direction and do their own thing, but you can get some really interesting random shapes like this. And then of course you could use the layer adjuster to move them around and transform them however you like. Moving on to the next brush, we have pores. I'm gonna select a darker green color like this. This brush can utilize the flow map and the paper texture. I'm gonna set the paper to simulated wood grain and I'll set the flow map to clouds. I'll paint a test stroke here and you can see I get this porous pattern. I could use this to make a rock texture on the wall. If I change the paper to something else like pebble board, then you can see I get a different pattern. The next brush is called slime. I'm gonna choose a green slime color like this. And we can use this to have slime dripping down like this. You can just pull straight down or you can tap to have little blobs of slime suspended in the air. Or you can draw blobs of slime if you want them to be bigger. This is a glow brush so it's gonna build up to a lighter color as you paint over it. You can make darker slime that builds up more slowly it has a lot of three-dimensional form to it. I could choose a different color of slime and put in some of this. And then of course, if you don't want it to be opaque, then you can change the composite method to screen. And now it's more translucent. Now you can also control the papers. So I could choose a different paper here. Let's say small dots. And I'll get a different pattern in my slime. You can see there's that dotted pattern. Or I could choose something like simulated wood grain. And I get a more chunky, rocky texture. If I want something that's just kind of plain, I can choose thick handmade paper. And then there isn't any texture at all. And the last brush in the Alien Brush Pack is called Viral. I'm going to choose kind of a yellowish green color like this. And I can paint on the ground and I get these little clumps of viruses or bacteria or something. Or it could just be some sort of alien growth put that here on the background as well. You get these little multicolored blobs that are all clumped together. You can change the flow map if you like. We can make that something else. Let's say fine dots. And now those viruses are clumped together in that fine dots pattern. If I change it to fish skin, then they're clumped together in a more hexagonal pattern. If you want more control over the variety of colors, you can also play with the color variability panel here. I can have the color vary less, then it remains a more consistent color, or I can have it vary more, and it'll be more rainbow colored. And I can also control the value and the saturation as well. So feel free to experiment with that. You can get a lot of looks out of this brush. So there you go. That's a demonstration of how to use the Alien Brush Pack. If you enjoyed this video, take a quick second to click the like button. And make sure to subscribe for more Corel Painter tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.